there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me in this video. Uh, I want to be very clear right up front that I'm not going to show you a lick. I'm not going to show you how to play anything. Uh, as a side benefit, I'll show you an option for making a change between a minor one chord and a minor five chord. But the topic of today's video is really more about how to ingrain certain ideas into your fingers. Uh, and this came up uh, working with some of my private students um, in the All Access Pass group. Uh, and we were talking about really how, you know, we, we, we tend to talk a lot about making, making these changes, going from the major to the minor blues sound, or, uh, you know, in a minor blues, maybe changing from uh, like A minor blues to D minor blues or to E minor blues. Uh, and in fact, the, the, the topic of conversation or the, the, the song in question was, um, I believe it was Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone by Bill Withers, which, you know, has a, has a minor one chord, which goes to a minor five chord. And so one of the options that you could do for that is to, over that minor one chord, you can play, right, good old A minor pentatonic, any box will do. Right, any box will do. Um, but over the five chord, because it's also minor, you could switch, if you wanted, you don't have to, to E minor pentatonic. And this is just an example, okay? This is, this is one approach that I'm going to use for this example. But we, you could be talking about any change at all. You could be talking about going from a minor pentatonic to G major pentatonic, or A minor pentatonic to D minor pentatonic, or A minor pentatonic to D major pentatonic. It depends on the song. So you, you really gotta remember that this is the 30,000 foot view. I'm using A minor to E minor specifically as an example, and that's it. And I'm not saying that you should always do this, but it's, it's gonna make a good example for my purposes, okay? So what this boils down to is isolating an idea. Okay, so the the idea here is that over the A minor chord, we want to use the A minor pentatonic scale. Over the five chord, the E minor, we want to use the E minor pentatonic scale. But in the heat of battle, right, when you're actually doing your solo, sometimes that's hard. Like we know in our mind, we should be able to do this. But maybe the execution suffers. Uh, you get nervous. Uh, you know, the jam track's on, you kind of lose your place, you get a little bit misguided, all these things can happen. And it's not enough to just know that something's possible. You've got to be able to execute it. And there's going to be a bazillion ways, that's, that's a, by the way, an official scientific term, bazillion. There's a bazillion ways to make the change from any one sound to any other sound. There just are. I mean, we have six strings, we have diff all these different boxes. There's tons of ways that you could make that change. So what you have to do is you have to isolate those particular ways that make sense to you, that work for you, that you can see, and then you've got to ingrain them into your fingers so that you don't have to think about it anymore. And that is what I want to try to help you with today. So this is a very high level concept and I get that. It's very, you know, 30,000 foot view. But it's a practice technique, right? This is this is a way that you can practice stuff for for mastery, if you want to call it that. So, let's say again that I'm I've got my good old uh, A minor chord, and so what I did is I know that what I want to practice on is going from A minor pentatonic to E minor pentatonic, which I know is up here. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to go, and I've got it in my looper. I don't want to go from down here to up here. Okay, that's not to say that I can't. It's just not what I want to do. I like the sound. Uh, I like the elegance, I'll say, of keeping things close together. I like to be able to make those changes and keep the sounds close together. So I want to be able to go from A minor and I want to be able to go to E minor without leaving this spot. Okay, 
So notice, you'll often hear me talk about musical problems. This is a musical problem to solve. And I have a, a, what I call my blue scale trainer tool exactly for this purpose, because here you find yourself in a, in a, in a spot and you have to solve really, you know, where do I go from here? Okay, so if we, if we look at E minor pentatonic, box one, right? Well, obviously that's not where that is. <laughs> Very different uh, area of the fretboard. So let's go backwards, box five. Well, still not very close. How about box four? Now we're getting closer for sure. And particularly if I played A minor and I did sort of the extension into box two, I would be very much in the area of box four, right, for that E minor. Or if I go down one more, box three in E minor is in exactly the same general fretboard area as box one of A minor. So I have A minor, E minor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get used to playing the chord and the sound. And you'll notice that I'm starting up at the top end. I'm not starting down here. Okay, my solos don't happen down here. This, this, is, this is the basement. This is where things get lost. Get used to playing from the tops. Right, or maybe here's A minor, E minor. Maybe I use this one. Box four, right? But I'm just gonna go back and forth, playing the chord and then playing the sound. And it doesn't have to be in time. It, it, it doesn't have to be any of that. It's just, I wanna get to where I'm equating these different sounds in my head. You can take as long or as little as you need to do that, but you need to make sure that you can very easily visualize both sounds that you want to use. Now this could be two boxes of the same sound, okay? Uh, it, it could be two completely different sounds. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is we're switching from one pattern to another. It doesn't matter whether they're in the same key or not, okay? I'm just using two different keys as an example. So what I would then do is I would practice making the change, for example, going from box one, sorry, to box three, to box one, to box three. So I'm getting used to going back and forth. I might also practice uh, using some sort of a slide move to get to box four. There's, there's my E. Here's my A again. Here I'm back in E. Back in A. E. So you see, I'm kind of playing around between both boxes one and two of my A minor sound and boxes three and four of my E minor sound. Now that may be a little bit too much to bite off and that's okay. But what's gonna happen is as you kind of noodle around with this stuff, some particular ideas are gonna grab you. They're gonna be the ones that you're like, oh, that makes sense, I can see that. That's gonna become part of your vocabulary. And so you're gonna wanna kind of focus and hone in on that and really get comfortable with it. And at that point, you can kind of start your looper. And all I did was play two bars of each chord. Okay, so here's the one chord, the A minor. Here's the five chord.
Here's the A minor chord. Here's the E minor chord. Here's the A minor chord. So this is box two. Here's the E minor, so it's box four. Box one for A minor. Box three for E minor. A minor, right? And I'm just going back and forth, comfortably making those changes. I'm not playing any, I'm not playing any of that. Okay, we don't need that. You just gotta get used to seeing the moves. Don't worry about bending. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Get these changes, this, this one idea, really, really ingrained in your fingers. When you get it ingrained in your fingers, it'll be there. And then you get to take that step back. As you're playing your solo, you get to think a little bit more about what it is you want to play and a little bit less about how it is you're going to play it. And as you continue to, to step back and step back and get that higher level and higher level and higher level view of soloing as a whole, where you're concentrated almost completely on what you want to play and not nearly so much on how you're going to play it, you're, you'll find that your solos are much more musical. They're much more enjoyable for you to play because you don't, I, you know, Admittedly, in, in my world, I don't ever have to think about how am I going to play the A minor blues scale or how am I ever going to play, you know, the E harmonic minor scale. I, you know, I have all those scales down. I don't have to think about that anymore. When I want to make a change, I just imagine that I have made the change. And it's very, very, very rare that I don't just immediately know where that is. And when I find one where I don't just immediately know where that is, then I work that one until I do. So that's kind of, you know, just, just in the process of playing and, and practicing and noodling over jam tracks. Sometimes, you know, once a year or so, I run across something where something feels awkward. And it's usually that there's one little spot somewhere where I haven't practiced before. So I'm going to try to work out something in that spot. And that's kind of how you, you, you might want to approach it. So... I hope that is beneficial. I hope you got something out of it. And of course, as always, if you think you have a friend that is a guitar player and might enjoy this video, feel free to share it with them. And again, I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. I will talk to you soon. Take care.